Hello everyone, building dynamic data driven videos requires pure planning as well as foreseeing various cases ahead of time. If a goal is to make it sustainable, then you want to have it built as easy to update as possible, without tweaking the code all the time without much unavoidable manual efforts without losing your sanity. Since I've been there and done that, it's no hard to guess the reason of my balding forehead, I'm going to share one super important takeaway to make it happen. Yeah to keep your hair with you, kind of. Leaving jokes aside, it's about using external video settings file for versioning of your designs. With that said, let's jump ahead. Maybe I'm lazy or maybe I'm just a fan of automating tedious tasks or maybe both. It makes you feel good to see actions being taken care for you. And it's not just a magic of any kind, just a proper planning here and there ahead of time. Well, like everywhere. First of all, let me cover the overall use case of video settings file and then we could go through the benefits why I suggested using this or similar way. Video settings is just a simple JSON file which includes some objects as well as keys or arrays and they define how final video will look like and how parameters will control the finished out. So imagine a situation where based on how video settings file looks like, script execution takes those parameters and builds different looking outputs. Structure wise, these are completely optional and you can definitely create any objects you like, structure them the way you prefer. It's just a matter of your own preference. I see it this way as uh, separating topics into different objects and then accessing them easily. You could also completely successfully go in a flat level. That would be just a bit more complex to access those elements, especially if this video settings file grows. So without being too dry, let's see how it works in the real life scenario. Here we have comp settings object which includes an array of uh, different resolutions. This execution is made in a way that no matter how many objects we declare for resolutions, the script will take all of those and build differently looking uh, resolution output. Just to see how it looks like, here we have full HD landscape version and I will just execute the script which I run previously and we can see that uh, it will build output of 1920 on 1080 resolution and if we go and change those those numbers let's switch it and make it portrait instead so i'm just rerunning the script you can see that it adjusted the resolution accordingly and it's not just trick where the background matches foreground of the app which i saw by someone doing it that's kind of nasty, but you can see that the resolution is not faked here. The idea is that uh, whichever settings we have here, we are using them by the script and uh, build accommodates to it. And uh, for this uh, preview purpose, I just uh, made it to process single first item of uh, comp settings. But in general, once I'm building final outputs, I'm just using array of those um, elements and building different outputs accordingly. Here you can see a different watch folders, which I use on different machines. And uh, regarding whether it's PC or Mac, I just declare those uh, here. A P file key was uh, not set here in this example, but in general, I just plan to set After Effects file here in order to pick up proper template file. In this sense, all those further settings are also made. Basically, what we are changing here is uh, adding different titles in exactly the same way execution is made here. So if we change main category to Corona stats instead, you can see that here we have COVID stats. If we save this and rerun the script, we will have title updated to the one which was in video settings file. So as you can see, whatever we have in video settings file, we are reusing that information in order to build finished output. There is one exception, in fact, that this title is being taken from the file name, but uh, this is old version of the script and uh, in the latest updates, I already made it to be taken from this topic titles object in video settings file. So we can also change the colors, set specific theme uh, for execution, choose 
audio file, you name it. So there is no need to go through all of those. It's just a matter of your creativity and you can define as many objects here as you want. And uh, the reasons why you should do that, I will explain those a bit later, but uh, we can see something else here. We can also control how many items can be visible in the main window. So you can see that here we have 10 of them. If we change that number to five and rerun the script, we should have five bars in the height of main window. Don't get me wrong, there is no magic here. Whatever I declare in video settings file, when that variable or that number or that string, whatever is being used in the script itself and video settings file is just a way to declare variables to be used in the processing. Everything else which is done under the hood is just a matter of proper planning and uh, scripting itself. So here we had set number of visible data points to five and you can see that here we actually have five of them only and uh, design accommodates itself. If I define 15 points, you might have guessed it, that execution would build accordingly to the 15 data points in the height, but uh, this specific data set has only 10 items overall and you will see how it would behave in such scenario. We don't have uh, 15 array items in the data file so you can see that design still accommodates to fit that need in case we would have a bigger data file it would fit in those remaining five items to suit 15 overall we can revert this back to 10. probably at this point you already guessed the overall idea of this video settings file by changing those values and rerunning the script, we can generate multiple files without even bothering about the actual script, etc. So we, I can show you one another object here, which controls the how animations between the bars looks like. So here we can see that when the values changes, we have slight opacity change and a bit of rotation. If we increase rotation to let's say 10 and uh, change opacity to 5 and maybe even scale up value to 110, scale down to 50, once it animates through the lines, you will see the difference and it will look completely different. So that's also a good way of uh, controlling how the animation looks like since everything is being set up by the script. Uh, we want to have that ability to control uh, script without actually changing what's inside the script. So video settings file is good for that. And uh, here you see there is no difference here, but once we reach to a point where uh, transitions are happening, you can see that we have a lot more rotation happening, uh, opacity is down, scale is up. So everything which you see here is able to control visuals for bar animation. The title of these um, objects could be better, but you get an idea overall. This is how video settings file works. And uh, since I just reset that, I can rerun the script back again and it will create the same look as it was originally. So the benefits why I would suggest using a video settings file of this kind is that it requires no separate changes for a script file itself, meaning that you can have one major script file which could turn around into different outputs based on video settings file. So what you do is you just update video settings file and execute the script. You might guess it. It would generate multiple projects, different color sets, resolutions, animation styles without actually uh, requiring to update the script. So whenever you can do that, I would suggest going this path. It also allows to create uh, different outputs based on video settings file, as you have noticed in the resolution object. So it's just a matter of planning and how much outputs you need. Um, but it can be achieved this way as well. Last but not least, it gives a direct opportunity to link video settings file to web applications or the front end, meaning that if you plan this properly in the first place or 
at least uh, have some structure in place. If at some point you decide to link that uh, project with the web app application and uh, render files on the cloud or on your local machine based on the input made by the users in the web application, you can turn this, this type of execution into machine of automation in a matter of minutes well, maybe hours. Yeah, one thing I, I forgot to mention that this is all data. We actually living in a different times currently and hopefully this gets better. But uh, yeah, I'm just using that since I started creating this bar chart animation. What else? Actually, I could just finish this, but I remembered one other thing I could show you here is that um, there's an object types array, uh, which I declared what it does. It allows to create different animations on the same data set into different uh, data comparisons. Even though this specific execution is old and I already created uh, a lot more compelling options, I will just showcase you how it would look like. So imagine that uh, you execute the script which has such video settings file set up. You have three resolutions, you have other video settings, and uh, you have types array of two. Well, in this case, it would be that way. So what it does, it uh, creates every single resolution of every different style. And uh, yeah, you can see that it's not the most beautiful here <laughs> because the data is not actually suitable for this purpose. Apart from those huge circles here, you can see that progression is clear and you could see how the data looks like. As I mentioned, this is quite old project that I have already implemented a lot different style options here. And this types array already grow to four or five options at this point, which looks a bit nicer than current one. But you get an idea, the ability of thinking ahead of time, you can have a lot of versioning in place by just uh, using external video settings file, planning everything prior of time, and then just taking those fruits from the tree. This file will be a cornerstone for versioning, which we will see in upcoming series of episodes. If you are interested about dynamic data-driven approaches in After Effects, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel if not already. Learn those shortcuts from someone who faced issues in the past and already found possible solutions to them. Thanks for your time and I hope to see you around.